Hey gang, Scott here. I've got a review for you today of Topaz Labs Sharpen AI. Now this is not a new tool on the market, but it's a new tool to me. I've only recently added it to my workflow, maybe a month and a half ago now. And there was a particular reason I did that. And I'll, I'll share the photo that prompted me to finally uh, go and find this product, try it out, and ultimately buy it. But what I'll cover in this video here is what Sharpen AI is, uh, the, the pros and the cons, you know, why, why do I recommend it, but you know, things that you'll need to be aware of, uh, some preferences that you should double check when you first start up Sharpen AI, make sure you've got these things set, and I'll show you a few examples too. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, and if you're thinking about adding Sharpen AI to your toolkit, please go to the show notes and do two things. Use the link that's there, and then use the offer code I have there. It will save you some money, won't cost you anything extra, it'll actually save you money. And you gotta use that link first though if you wanna help support the channel so I can come back and do more independent reviews like this. So uh, what is Sharpen AI? Like its name suggests, it sharpens your photo, it recovers detail, but it does more than that. It will uh, kind of save some shots. You know, uh, if you're shooting handheld and you've got a little bit of you know, shake in your hands, like I'm not the steadiest handheld shooter, you fire it into uh, Sharpen AI. You can recover some of that. You can get a recovery of just a generally slightly soft photo. Or if you misfocus a little bit, the AI models understand this. They can figure things out and give you a sharp image. So uh, what I want to do first is uh, let's take a look at the Sharpen AI interface. Uh, we'll cover the preferences you should check and then generally how the tool works. Then we'll go through some examples. Here's the, the fundamentals of Sharpen AI. It's like most tools. You get a nice big preview of your photo. It's zoomed in at 100% by default, which is how you want to work. You have your controls on the right side. You can change some of those things, but the preferences I want you to check. Let me open up my preferences here. Is number one, double check that your AI processor is using your graphics card, not just the CPU. When I first started up Sharpen AI, it hadn't auto-detected and selected my GPU. And that made a big difference in performance. Uh, secondly, if you can allow extra memory consumption, you've got a lot of memory on your system, hit that setting to high. Again, it's about speeding things up. Uh, also, do not turn off disable model downloading. So the, the AI engines, all AI engines, run on a model. And if that model is local to your system, well, it's going to run faster. Because uh, that kind of brings me to the one, the, the one drawback of Sharpen AI is it's a little slow switching between you know tweaking things and changing things but you know, we'll, we'll get there i'll show you those examples here but these are the preferences i want to make sure that you have set the stuff down in performance all right so a quick interface overview here uh, in the top upper right you have your zoom controls you have the ability to view the original you know click and hold and you'll see the original soft out of focus image let go and you'll get your sharpened image a variety of views, single view, split view. I tend to use single uh, for doing the work and then split to do a comparison at the end. And then on the right hand side is where the, the real work happens. We have image quality, settings, post-processing. Uh, I left post-processing expanded really just to show you there's one control on there. It's about adding grain and that's something I don't even use Sharpen AI for. I'll just do that in other tools if I need to go and add grain. I've got other tools for that. So we're going to close that and ignore it. Image quality and settings. This is where all the magic happens. Now, uh, by default, the auto settings are done, and so Sharpen AI will examine the photo, compare it against its AI model, and try to figure out, well, what do I see here? Do I see something that's just generally out of focus? Do I see some like you know motion blur and some camera shake? What's going on here, and what do I need to address? And for this photo, it auto-detected motion blur. It applied a normal amount of correction. And then it set these sliders here, right? And you can tune these, right? You have you have control. Say, oh, I I don't think it's motion blur. I think it's just too soft. And so you can run that and let the uh, the tool do another generation. And in this case, nope, that's not what was going on. The uh, the AI was was smarter than me. But if you think ah, it's it's still a little bit blurry, let me jack up 
a little more of that removal. This is where you control and tweak the AI, right? You can tell it, I generally agree with what you did here for detecting motion blur, but you know what? I want you to be a little more aggressive in the algorithm. So these are the controls that we have. We can also suppress noise when you are increasing sharpness sometimes you can exaggerate noise and so you have a control here to try to try to rein that in uh, and so it's one of those you need to just look at your photo decide do I see any noise in here this actually looks pretty clean I'm looking at the uniform areas like in this sign here and in the background here those all look pretty darn good and so I wouldn't need to tweak this particular setting and the last thing to say about the, the different modes and interfaces, you can mix these too. Just because I have motion blur and it's selected normal, you can you know combine, right? You can say motion blur and very, very blurry and have the AI regenerate, try a new version of that, you know, adjusting things with, uh, with the AI. So it's kind of like this is the engine that you want to select to do things. And then this is how you can fine tune that engine. That's how I like to think of the way that the interface operates. Last bit is down toward the bottom, very, very bottom. You've got uh, a summary of what's going on here and this mask button. You can click that and you have some masking options so that if you do not want to apply this sharpening everywhere, you can selectively apply it. I have an example I'll show you later in the video where this comes in handy. Uh, I will say that, oh, you know what, let me hold that thought until we get to the masking part. So uh, that is the overview of the interface, right? Let's start with this example here, uh, you know, kind of a classic travel photo, you know, walking around handheld, and I uh, saw this scene, I thought it was very interesting, captured the photo. We can see like there's, there's softness in the patterns uh, on the kimonos, and their faces are just, you know, they're a little out of focus. Everything's just kind of soft and blurry. So it's like, well, let me bring this into Sharpen AI and see how it performs. It loads up, the preview starts generating. We can see that progress bar on the lower left. It does take a few seconds. You know, that's really the one drawback is there's a few seconds for it to generate. But notice the controls and the settings on the right side. Those are the settings that I had left over from the last example I was just showing you. The interface remembers what were the last settings you chose and starts there. So if you want to use those auto settings, you know, we gotta go turn those back on and let it decide what it wants to do. Let it regenerate. So each time you click and change something, you're going to have that momentary pause. And a lot of times, auto is great. You know, I'll look at the split view here and we can see on the left hand side, you know, the original, and on the right, we have the Christmas. I mean, look at the difference. It's incredible. Not only the, the facial features, the eyes, the lips, the teeth. Behind the, uh, the girls here, all these little uh, decorative things uh, hanging up on the wall there, the patterns in the kimono, and even something as blurry as this area here is just super crisp. So oftentimes for like my walk around shots, I'm just doing handheld, and I know I don't have the steadiest hands, I can bring it into Sharpen AI, hit auto, and I'm good to go. It really is impressive. It gets very, very close, if not one and done, with those two auto settings. Now, one thing I do need to point out about the interface, the auto settings, that is for the engine and for the sliders. Notice that this very blurry is still selected, and it's in a different color, right? These are gold. This is like a blue. Uh, I can still change that and adjust things accordingly. So if very blurry felt a little bit strong, then you can back that off to normal. And honestly, I think for this photo, I was really, really blurry. A lot of the details that were in the backdrop there just got lost. So I'll leave that as is, and uh, this photo is finished. I want to return to this photo for our second example uh, and point out a couple of things just about the photo in general. It's obvious that there is some blurriness going on here, right? There is, is definitely a problem with sharpness. But the subject of this photo, this Sacramento street sign, 
uh, this should be sharper than the background. You know, the background is purposely soft, right? A shallower depth of field. And why I want to point out this example in the photo, it'll let us highlight the out of focus mode of Sharpen AI and sometimes how the auto settings don't always get things right. So here we are in Sharpen AI. Now this has been sharpened, right? You have these auto buttons have been clicked. And if I hold down original, yeah, it's a little softer. This is a little better but it's certainly not particularly good. Well, what happened here? Let's open up these settings here. Okay, auto chose out of focus. And what out of focus uh, is really mostly intended for, even the icon suggests it, like with portraits, the perfect example, where you're wanting to focus on a person's eye and focus gets missed and maybe you catch like the inner bridge of their nose or something like that, where there's just a little bit of difference in that focus. And for a portrait, a shallow depth of field photo, those small differences make a big difference in sharpening. Now what happened here is I didn't miss focus on the street sign, but I did have some motion blur, right? We can even still see that motion blur. It's almost in the direction of this arrow here. So the AI has depth map understanding. It's understanding, oh, this is farther away than this thing here. Maybe you missed focus. Maybe you're out of focus. But that's just not correct. I'm going to hit motion blur now. It's jumping back to very blurry. And let's see how that does. See, that's world's better. But what's also more importantly, the, the background is still staying kind of soft, right? That's good. That's exactly what we want. And in this case, I may actually push remove blur a little bit harder just to get this, the, this sign really crisp, like these letters get really, really crisp. Now I'll zoom out here for a second. This will also give me an opportunity to show you one other thing about the interface. If I go large size, it's going to tell me yeah, I'm going to take a little bit longer to generate previews because now it has to look at every single pixel. Now we see that this street sign is nice and sharp. The background is still softer, right? It, and it's intended. Let's do one more look here with our split view. And we can see the before and after, right? You know, this is just so much better in terms of sharpness. I can be finished with this photo, take it on to do further processing. My sharpness problems are solved. The key thing is the auto settings work well but they're not infallible. So think a little bit about your photo. And if you're talking about a depth map, like you missed focus, that's where your out of focus option is. But if you know you got focus right and there's still softness, try some of those other modes. Don't just rely on auto. For our third example here, we have a landscape scene and this photo is just kind of a little bit soft, right? We zoom in and you know, the, the, the trees and the details in the midground, even on the ice itself, it's just a little bit off. So we have another mode in Sharpen AI to help us recover that level of sharpness. So let's get this over into Sharpen AI. And we have the two soft mode, right? Very appropriately named. Here's the original. And take a look at like the, the mid ground and the background, the detail on that foreground ice. And then after, so we're just getting that little bit of a pop. And if we need to adjust and refine, we want to get a little more aggressive on removing the blur. We can have uh, that be a little higher. Uh, but the thing that is happening as we push the sharpening to get the mid-ground and the ice looking good, the water is taking on sharpness, right? If I do that original, before, after. Let's zoom out to fit. This will once again give us the warning. Say, okay, I got to go generate that preview for the whole image. And there's, you know, 40 some odd megapixels worth of stuff to do. And look how sharp the water is, right? Before and after. We don't want that. That's the sharpening in an area we just don't want. So we have the ability to mask inside Sharpen AI. It's okay. The masking tools are there. If you don't have anything else, then, uh, then Sharpen AI, you have masking tools. But they're not the greatest masking tools, but I'll show you how they work. So let's hit this little mask button down in the lower right corner. And by default, the sharpening is removed from the entire image. I can click the sub button. So now I have the sharpening applied everywhere and I will subtract or remove things. We have our controls for the brush radius, 
the softness, the opacity. You do have edge detection, so that's helpful, right? So when you have edge detection on, the spread, which is really like the edge of the brush, will kind of be, this will be uh, more precise and it will take a little bit longer in terms of processing power. Uh, this will be a little more generous on what's considered an edge. And so what we do from here is we make our brush, you know, relatively large and start painting away from the areas that we don't want the sharpening added. Now the brush is jittery. I will say that the masking tools, they work, but if I start to get fast about this and or try to be fast, now I'm going to stop painting for a second. You kind of see how things like, kind of caught up there for a little bit. So you can work your way through this and you get the idea where I can paint away the sharpness from the foreground. Let's just do that half of it here and say apply mask. And now if we look at the before and after original, you can see that the sharpening is being added to the right hand side more. There's still some shifts happening in the left and it has a little bit of an illusion of sharpening, but it's not as, uh, as, as grainy and detailed as it is on the right side. But with the masking tools, I'd advocate if you have another application, like if you're a Lightroom user, you probably have Lightroom in Photoshop. Work this through Photoshop. You can use Sharpen AI as a plugin and you have stronger masking tools available to you. Put your sharpened version on one layer and your original on the other, do your masking there. Uh, same if you've got on one photo, you can do the same thing. You know, just work your Sharpen AI stuff and save that to a file marry it up with your original in Photo Raw and do your layering there. Your masking tool is just going to be stronger. If you don't have anything else, you can get it done, but it's going to be a, a little more a little more work, a little more heavy lifting with the masking in Sharpen AI. So that is the, the rundown of Topaz Lab Sharpen AI. I hope this gives you a good feel for the tool, how it works, uh, how you might incorporate it into your workflow. You know, pros and cons, you know, the, the pros are the results. You get very, very good results. You saw several photos, uh, that Sacramento photo in particular really stands out as it, it salvaged the photo. It made it into a usable photo that I can go and process and it's crisp and it's sharp and it maintained that uh, that level of depth that I wanted in the photos. It didn't over sharpen things. It has sufficient controls and a very strong AI model. Uh, for the, the cons, like the, the downsides, it's a little slow. When you're adjusting and changing things between the different models or adjusting a slider, you usually have to wait a few seconds to get those results back. The computer I'm running on is about three years old now, and uh, it's got a decent amount of memory. It's got a decent graphics card. It takes a few seconds. Uh, so, you know, more modern machine, probably a little snappier. Older machine, expect it to be a little bit slower. Uh, and then I guess the last is, you know, it's, it's somewhat of a neutral is, is the price. So uh, if you use the, the link and the offer code I have down there, it'll save you some money on there. So it's not the cheapest tool. Uh, with the discount, you know, it kind of runs in the neighborhood of like 60 to $70 US. And because it's a point solution tool, right? You're not going to use this on every photo. But if you have a set of photos or you shoot handheld a lot and you, you, know, you catch photos that's like it's almost there, but it wasn't quite sharp, you may want to look at Sharpen AI. But, you know, um, I'm very happy with the results. For me, the investment was worth it. And I will get my money's worth by, uh, by salvaging and even improving a couple of the photos that have just come out a little bit soft. I did say, you know, the, the, the photo that prompted me to buy this, I mentioned at the very top of the video. Well, well here it is. This was a six panel panorama. And I did this handheld and two of the panels were just a little bit soft. Well, Sharpen AI let me sharpen them up so I could get a nice looking stitch. And I'm very happy that I have this pano and I was able to, uh, to put it together with the help of Sharpen AI. So I uh, hope you found the video useful. Any other questions, you know, go ahead and drop them below. I'll do my best to answer. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.